guys and welcome back to royal cast after dark this case was well known in the new york city area um it was in the bronx and it's a little bit i don't know very gruesome so if you are sensitive to anything with blood gangs and everything else you can you know watch other cases and or other podcast episodes that we post but in other words, let's start this new case. A lot of people know this kid as Alessandro Guzman Feliz, but some of us know him as Junior. So Junior was a 15-year-old boy who was so very innocent, had a lot of dreams, and on June of 2018, that dream would end for him. He wouldn't be alive, and it's so gruesome, it's so... it's just... A lot of things I have opinions on this, and I remember this day because me and my brother was going out to Los Angeles, and we heard this on the news like the whole when I tell you if you heard it like if you're outside of New York City and you heard about it, but when you were in New York City, everyone was so upset. Everyone gathered together to get these people who murdered this 15-year-old innocent kid. Every I didn't see this much this much unity in a in the whole fucking New York City in a whole my whole life, basically, because everyone was determined to get who killed this 15-year-old boy. Junior was a kid from the Bronx, Belmont neighborhood in the Bronx of New York City. And June 20, 2018, he was murdered in his neighborhood going to a bodega by a violent Dominican gang called Tarantino's gang. Um, I really never heard of these gangs and myself, I am Dominican. So, um, this kid... He was a good kid. There was a lot of pictures of him in um, police uniforms because he wanted to become one. And he was just so bright and very nice. And I saw a video of his mom and it broke me down because I don't have a kid. But seeing her emotion of heartbroken that her child has been murdered for no goddamn reason at all. And it's only one thing, because he was mistaken by a gang rival. A 15-year-old was mistaken by a gang rival, which is beyond me. Like, I was so upset. I think the whole New York City community was upset at this situation. And the thing is, there is CCTV cameras on... Basically, the outside of the inside of the bodega and also in the street that he was running to to go to the hospital or something. And it's so eerie, very fucking eerie to just watch those CCTV cameras. But as a community, we wanted to get these gang members because a 15 innocent year old child was murdered for no goddamn reason. Like literally no goddamn fucking reason. But, um, so the gang came up on that night, because it was on June 20th night, and they came in four cars that night and approached Junior in a deli, stabbed him to death due to the CCTV cameras. You can see him being dragged outside of the store onto the side, and the gang had very dangerous weapons, like machetes, we call them machetes, machetes, knives, all types of things, and he was stabbed multiple times. 
Junior tried to ask for help, but it it was a lot of gang members and the bodega, bodega person owner was also scared, but he could at least do something. And I know they put they placed a protection for all bodegas owners just because of this case. He was he was literally stabbed multiple times. Junior tried to ask for help and walked a distance where there was a close by hospital but couldn't make it due to the severe stabs that he encountered and also the lust of blood. Um, basically, there were 14 murderers who were arrested due to this case because a lot of people were manhunting these people down. I seen videos of literally some of them, like other gang members, literally stopping them in the middle of the highway or some of them stopping them in an airport. Um, some of them tried to escape to go to the Dominican Republic, but they were brought back. But there were 14 murderers that were arrested. Their ages were around 18 to 29 years old. And literally, there's this ringleader, Diego Soro. I don't know. I don't want to say your name perfectly. But he said he was mistakenly targeted the team believing he was a member of a rival gang, like I said. And video footage captured the assault clearly. Some of their faces were a little bit blurry, so a lot of people were trying to hesitate and know that. But um, the moment that the defendant was holding Junior by his sweatshirt, thrust his large knife directly into his throat. The judges wrote, describing Essa's action, it is undepicted that the resulting wound, which was four and a half inches deep and severe, the jugular vein, was the sole cause of this child's death. A panel of judges vindicated a first-degree murder charge Thursday against the man convicted of delivering the fatal blow to the killing of Junior. And basically, this man, Martinez Estela, will be facing new sentences based on charges of second-degree murder, second-degree conspiracy, and second-degree gang assault that still stands to this day. I also heard some of these gang members that, you know, the 14 of some of the 14 of them were also beaten to a pulp in the jail because of killing of this. Um, I know there's like a standard of I know, like, if you raped a child or did anything to a child with if that gets into a jail cell, like into the jail prison you will get harmed because some of these convicted people don't like harming kids. Innocent kids at that fact. And some of them do have kids of their own outside, so they would get hurt automatically. But I also heard there was another part of... A lot of people were saying that it was due to a girl. A girl that placed the manhunt on him because of some situation with high school stuff, I believe. And I know they were storming her house and blaming her a lot. Um, I do feel for this family. They deserve peace. I hope he he's in peace. I know a lot of people tried to help him. Well, I think they did try to help him. But as much as he did try to go to the hospital himself, he couldn't. So there was a home memorial right in front of the bodega for him. It's still there to this day. People will still ride for Junior. He was such an innocent, loving spirit, bright boy. Um, Condolences to the family. Um, I think this still is ongoing because they're switching a lot of the the um, the cases that they got in. Because, like I said, one of them was supposed to be just for one from one prosecution but now he is being sentenced for three of them so it changes to a lot but that's basically the main ringleader who is diego um i don't know these gang type of thing i don't know i don't i find it a little bit i don't want to say stupid like yeah have like whatever have you know group of your friends gang whatever you want to call it but the violence within it I don't know, as his humanity, I feel like it's a waste of our space, a waste of our time. We don't know if we will be living the next day. And ever, like, I, like they told me before, 
The next day is never promised, so live your life to the fullest. <clears throat> and I believe that 100%. So me wasting it on stupidity arguments that doesn't concern my whole life, I'd bold, I wouldn't do it. Like, I really wouldn't. Like, I know these people are not scared because of the law and all this. Some of them are not. But was it worth it killing an innocent child to lose your freedom for it? Was it worth it? Because to me, it's not. It really wasn't. So... Like I said about the girl that was also in, supposedly was one of the motives because of the um, murder. It was basically the girl in a sex tape tied to the bodega murder was the point. Um, the father of this girl, she says that he did not know anything until one of his, I think, family members sent the video through Facebook. And he saw the video and he was distraught basically because he hasn't seen his daughter in a while. Also, he hasn't seen his other kids in a while because the, mo the mother put a order protection on herself before from him. Don't know why. But he does say the mother did not know how to raise them, right? So that's it was just like a whole lot of mess. Everything, the whole case was going everywhere. But the girl was conf like it was confirmed, I believe, that he that she was a sexual victim. Mind you, she was around fourteen, I think thirteen or fourteen years old when that video was taken. So everything was linked um to it. Although they were getting death threats. The father did make a statement. He did say that he was sorry that this happened. He feels lost and his heart is broken. And he says he's shocked and very emotional right now. But they have been receiving death threats on social media, leading him to deactivate his account for fear for his life. And he also said that, I have to be careful walking around. I'm scared. I'm worried. I need my safety for these kids, these children's. And... He added that he has not been contacted by the police and his daughter is not the girl in the YMPD has been provided protection for. Police sources have been unable to confirm if Jarrah's daughter is being investigated. So to this day, we really don't know. It is just a whole debacle. And, but they did conclude that basically he was mistaken by a gang rival. And yeah, we just need to be careful in these streets because we don't know who people are these days, to be honest. Could be a family member, could be a close friend. At this point, if I don't know you for like 15 to 20 years, deep down or more, I probably won't trust you. Um, Even that, I probably won't trust you because I don't know. I don't know if you're going to switch on me. Today is just protect yourself as much as you can and survival of the fittest at this point in age so this is a case of junior um my condolences to the family uh we we did do a lot of things to help them out um she did do a fundraise a uh, hashtag thing called justice for junior i think it's still up i'm not sure but if you do want to do you know send your respects you can also go to the bodega place i think they they have like a whole portrait of him right there and a lot of people still go to it so yeah um i feel so sorry for the family for losing a young child and a young child that his dreams have been taken away from him so my condolences let's not have this happen to another child again we need to keep our eyes open be go with a partner or something or family member so this stuff won't happen um and don't leave your child to go outside by themselves if they're underage i learned that a lot with a lot of cases that i'm looking up 
a lot of these kids go out by themselves and that's where they have the most dangers in their lives so keep them on i i won't i won't say keep them on a leash but just keep a close eye on them because anything could happen but yes rest in peace junior and we hope to see you in the next lifetime and sorry for the family beautiful family very beautiful family and yeah hope you guys enjoy this episode like i said everything it's every friday at 11 p.m for the after dark video well i keep saying video podcast episodes um i probably i don't know if i'm gonna do a video type of podcast yet i'm still trying to figure this thing out for the crime ones but maybe soon i'm not sure but yeah guys i see you in the next case on fridays at 11 p.m deuces